Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 337. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Twilight Genesis. G'day, Norman. How are you going? Hey there, man. How are you doing? I'm not too bad. Just having to go and help my parents with uh, stuff. I've got a new office, as you can see. Yep, yep. Uh, instead of being crammed inside a tiny bedroom. <laughs> so again, shelving units and stuff have come in to put stuff on. Otherwise, it's all a mess that's covered in, covering the floor that you can't see right now. Yeah, awesomeness, awesomeness. So, uh, by the way, the people at home can see how you are. This was, what, uh, a, a stark difference from 2017, two years ago, was it? Yeah, uh, a little, like a year and a half ago. Yeah, about a year and a half ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's my, when I was on the C PonyCon panel for MBS show, where I had long hair and a beard. I mean, I still don't look any better, but I, a little neater at least. Yeah, more, more professional. Like, <laughs> professional, professional. <laughs> as professional as you can get when you have a shirt that says Save Ferris on top. <laughs> yeah, doesn't matter. Professional. <laughs> so anyway, um, for the audience at home, this week we got no news, unfortunately, because... It is a very slow news week. Very, very slow. Where the only thing I can say is kind of season 9 spoilers. And yeah, we're not going to touch on season 9 spoilers. I don't even know any of the season 9 spoilers. Except for the trailer that you watch, which is kind of like I a movie trailer. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember anything actually in the trailer. I just remember that with the use of the song, it just feels so much like it was for a movie. Yeah. As opposed for a series. If I'm not mistaken, it's just a theme song. Just sung in a very rubato tone, like very serious. Yeah, it's like the sad version of the theme song. Yeah, it's like everybody's sad. Like... <laughs> but it's like, finally, Hasbro made a version of that song people aren't offended to, to hear. <laughs> but I still think people are, because people are people. So, yeah. So let's get into Season 9. Like, are you excited for it? I'm I'm not so much excited for the season itself as I am to just go out with a bang. Uh, a friend of mine who I've mentioned a couple times before, a uh, musical, he and I intend to go ham with the season. We're going to try and have like little mini parties to watch the airing of every episode if we can and just go as... I was, I was say, I'm trying to think of a way to say this about like my usual phrasing. I think is a little <laughs> too PG for the MBS show. So basically, you're just gonna what you're saying is just go whole hog, like yeah, you know, we're gonna go whole hog into it for watching the episodes and all that. Just one last hurrah because why not? Oh no, my bad. Sorry about that, audience. Sorry. Uh, how about you, Norman? Are you excited? Yeah, I am. I am. Like, it's been almost a while. I, I have the reviewer's curse where I don't mind waiting longer till I can finish season 8's review. But I am also at the point where I can't wait to see season 9. But I'm all okay. I mean, honestly, I enjoy it so much where I don't really mind it. But... I can't wait. Like it's gonna be set once it's over. But oh my bad, I'm moving <laughs> microphones and stuff. But like I was saying, um, I'm in a spot where I am very excited and happy, and also going to be a bit sad when it's over. But hey, season five is around the corner, so might as well give that a shot and see. Because what else are we going to do, right? We'll make our own season. Move. Oh, that's also a joke that I can't say. <laughs> I, I know, I know Pe what you're people, people know what that is. If they've seen Futurama, but they know the joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, besides, okay, uh, I, I mentioned what else I'm going to do. So, what else have you been doing, man, besides um, studying and the whole, uh, yeah, besides studying and whatever else you were doing before? Ah, yeah, well, as everyone can see, uh, I'm in a big open room. You, before this room, I was stuck in a small room, which was my bedroom and my office. So now I have them separated, and I have a lot more space, which is great. Uh, and as you said, I've been doing study for the last two months. 
and obviously I've I continued YouTube and Twitch, uh, and I've gotten back into War Thunder recently, which has been great. People have been enjoying me streaming that, oh. and I've been playing Monster Hunter World with uh, our good friend Kenny, Kenny, which has been great. Yeah, been Kenny, he's doing great. He's been pulling me through that, and by pulling me through that, I mean he has to deal with my my BS. <laughs> so, um, you're playing War Thunder Mon Han. And what else have you been playing, man? Um, aside from those two, not a lot. Every so often I'll jump into Warframe for like maybe a half hour or so, but uh, I haven't touched too much else. I do technically have uh, my hands on Satisfactory, though that's still an alpha. I've hardly touched it, and it's not exactly a copy that you're supposed to get. <laughs> so it's... Okay. It's, it's okay, but it runs kind of bad on my computer because I've... I need to update my graphics card. Yeah, but and it's an that's alpha. going to take a while. Yeah. But still, the game is an alpha, so it's very forgivable. I mean, you can't really complain that much. Yeah. It, it mostly, it the, the poor running is just because my graphics card is old and terrible. Well, I heard... It, it's sorry? pretty bad. Yeah, but I heard that the prices for a graphics card are going to drop a bit for now because of the new newer graphics card. So maybe you can get a... 1060 for cheap because 1060 is still good yeah the 1060 the the 1060 or the r960 i think are the ones that i'm looking at trying to get my hands on if possible but i'm not overly fussed i have to pay off like car rego and stuff before that anyway yeah still still um like as time goes on the prices of graphic cards get cheaper and cheaper and like currently, I'm running a GTX 1060, um, so that's still good. Like it's running Overwatch fine. It's playing stuff like Deadly Premonition okay, and I'm not playing any new games that much, so I'm not really feeling the burn. I'm not sure about you, so a 1060 can work. Yeah, the uh, mines they um. For anyone who's familiar with graphics cards will probably be absolutely rolling their eyes at this, but I've got a Radeon HD 6950. Oof. That stopped being good maybe five years ago. Oh, wow. Well, still, it's like prices of PC stuff is going lower because of the uh, G- no, RTX coming out and stuff. You know, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's gaming for us. So, you you said streaming and stuff. How that's going, man? Like, successful? Um... Well, I wouldn't say successful, but it's going all right. I get, you know, a, st- a steady two or three viewers to stream. Uh, I've been streaming XCOM too, but that hasn't been pulling. Pu- it hasn't been pulling in views, and I usually go into it with a sense of, oh god, not this again. <laughs> uh, I think I enjoy that more when I'm not streaming than I do when I am streaming. Yeah. Especially, I focus better when I'm not streaming, so yeah, I'm, I'm very much enjoying going back into War Thunder for streams. All right, all right, all right. I don't know. I, I I want to stream, but I'm too shy about it. Like I'm not ready for it. Uh, yeah, that can happen. I mean, you always do one of those streams where you don't really interact with chat, but I don't think those streams grow too much. Yeah. But you know what, I, I'll, when I decide to stream, I'll ask for your help and see how it goes. That's no problem. My YouTube's going okay, though. I'm at 93 subscribers, which mm. might not seem like a lot, but it's seven away from me opening a Discord and a dollar tip jar Patreon account. Hey, at least you're working away there. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm doing a... The series of my Pokemon Gym videos inspired by the similar series done by uh, YouTuber Birdkeeper Toby, where I make one video for every type of Pokemon and make a personalized gym for each type. Oh, cool, 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 cool. So those are future plans. Awesomeness, awesomeness. So what else have you been playing, man? Like, um, I've told my audience that I've been busy with... Devil May Cry 5. Like, yeah, Devil May Cry 5. Ah, oh, yeah, Devil May Cry 5. I, I, you mentioned those in your last two videos, uh, <laughs> which I bum-watched bum last night. I just jumped straight into them. Um, 
I can't really think of too much of what I've played recently. It's just been mostly Monster Hunter. Uh, I was playing something before Monster Hunter, but I can't remember what it is now. <laughs> but I just, I just sunk myself into Monster Hunter for the last month or so, uh, which has been fun because my mate's like, it's taken me six months to reach this point, and I'm like, I did that in like less than three weeks. But you didn't do the whole farming thing to get the great gear. I <laughs> uh, no, I farmed. <laughs> I just cheaped out because I used dual blades. So all I do is stand there and swing. <laughs> Honestly, and I it takes right. forever, but it, it lets me dodge around a bit easier. Honestly, I, I got no idea. I, I I don't play Mon Hunt. I heard about it, and in all honesty. Um, it's kind of grindy for me where you need to loot grind to just get stuff to make armor and whatnot. And I think it's similar to Warframe in a sense. Uh, there are There is a similarity in, in that Warframe. You have to... Certain items and frames and weapons, you have to find certain enemies, mostly bosses, and then farm them for drops. But... Yeah, yeah. Like Monster Hunter, you also have to defeat them, then exit the level to actually get the rewards. So unlike other games where you know it dies and it drops it, and you pick it up and bam, you already have it. Yeah. It's like because it's level based. Yeah, I, I'm but guess- it's not. It's not too bad. It, it's actually it's enjoyable, and the RNG isn't as absolutely horrid as like Warcraft and stuff is. Yeah, I'm guessing it's just me. Like those kind of game doesn't really. It's not. It's not my fancy. Oh, um, talking about games that are, are not my fancy. What about Apex Legend? Have you played it? Oh yeah, Apex Legend. I can't believe I forgot about that. I was. I watched a video about that like before we started recording. Uh, I've been playing that a bit here and there with my mates, the Bumble Kings, which is my other YouTube series. Uh. I keep forgetting to record more gameplay footage with them, but it's it's been fun. I still haven't won a match yet. Uh, one of them has won, I think, like three or four matches. I'm pretty terrible. Like I'm used to slower, slower running games, mm. so it's like I, I can be more methodical and line up my shots and all that a bit better. And in this, it's like no, you got to go ham. You you basically got to like a chug some Adderall and Red Bull <laughs> and go into it, like. Just I, 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 I can't keep up sometimes, so I get destroyed because I can't react quick enough. Oh, wow. And just spray into the wall. I can't aim worth anything at all. <laughs> understandable, understandable. But nah, I mean, for me, I, I, it looks like a game that I would like, but nah, man, it, it's EA. I'm not, not, not going to touch that. The best part is, EA had basically nothing to do with uh, this game. Yeah, just the only reason it. EA owns it is because it was the uh, the devs that made it are owned by EA. Yeah, like what? And Respawn, that's as close as it gets. Team Respawn, Respawn Entertainment. Yeah, Respawn yeah. And they didn't really had high hopes for Titanfall, Titanfall Two. Like they published Titanfall Two and at the same time published what Battlefield at the same time. Something like that. Yeah. So like <clears throat> yeah, Titanfall was left for dead. And with this, the only reason why Apex came out is because, like, oh, our other shooter, what was it called? Um, Anthem. Yeah, this is going to die. So, hey, Respawn, do you have anything? Yeah, we have this. Is it playable? Yeah. So, is it ready to go? Kind of. So, push it, shit, push it. Yeah, just shove it right out the door. Yep. No, no marketing, no anything is like, hey, if we put this out, maybe, you know, it'll distract some people long enough for us to fix Anthem. I mean, it didn't, because we all know how bad <laughs> Anthem is. Well, Even it's, though a lot of people still enjoy it, I'm like, tight. there's so much wrong with this game. <laughs> it's tight with Fallout 76. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not sure if I would say it's that bad. I mean, it's, it's bad, but that... That's the Bethesda game where even Bethesda's like, what have we done? Because <laughs> it's just, oh, Fallout 76 is, it's one of those things where you're pretty sure at this point we can like just sue Bethesda for being unfun. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, you know, you know, here's the thing. When I first heard that Bethesda were going to do Fallout 76 
and they mentioned the features that they had and one of the few features is oh this world that we have is no npcs just players uh players interacting with other players and online only kind of game and everybody was like woo, 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 woo. everybody was so excited and stuff and then when the game came out and it promised quote unquote what it promised people were complaining that oh there's no npcs Oh, the full game is just between player and player and stuff. Like, oh, it's only online. Ah, rage, rage. And they promised it that. And when the game's buggy, people say, like, oh, the game's buggy and stuff. Like, what were you expecting? It's Bethesda. Bethesda always comes out with games that are buggy and glitchy. So like they half cook the loaf of bread and give it to you and go, you have to cook the rest. Yeah, and you're complaining about it because, oh, I don't like this. But previously they did the same thing and you eat it all up, Skyrim. Yeah, I mean, with the single player games, like there is some level of polish. Like there is gameplay there. There are NPCs. There's, there's stuff there. The game just needs the bugs and glitches uh, ironed out. Mm-hmm. But Fallout 76 was basically, we made a multiplayer game that has nothing because we think we can get away with doing that minimum level of work. But at the same time, too, they promised you that and they delivered. So why get mad? Like, honestly, I don't... Well, okay, I, I, I don't have any um, interest in the game, so I may be playing Devil Advocate here, but it's a game that they promise. So, eh? I think part of it is a lot of people, they, they're like, we want the multiplayer Skyrim, we want the multiplayer Fallout, and whatever other game. But well, they they say they want it, and then they're like, we want it like a uh, fully open world, and you can do anything. I'm like, no, what you really want is the Borderlands experience in those worlds. You, you don't want Minecraft in those worlds, because those worlds aren't designed to be Minecrafted. <laughs> they just the, the engines don't work that way. The world doesn't really work that way. They're not that deep. They're not an MMO, and yeah. people they get upset because they end up getting like this half-hearted MMO style uh, Destiny knockoff, yeah. and then they're like, "Why is this terrible? Why do we hate this?" I'm like, "It's because it's not Borderlands, and that's what you wanted. <laughs> that, that you wanted." <laughs> That is a good thing, but it's not Borderlands. And Borderlands is kind of the nice in between where it's a loot grind shooter, but it's not the money base where you have to spend X amount of cash just to get more drops and whatnot, like quote unquote loot boxes. Yeah. Borderlands is what Destiny should have been. Destiny should have knocked off Borderlands instead of knocking off Warframe. I think Destiny would have been immensely better if it had done that. True that, true that. But still, um, I th- I think we're going off track for a bit now. So I'm just trying to reel us into one point. And yeah, I, th- I think what? Games are games. If you enjoy them, you enjoy them. Like personally for me, not many people enjoy DMC5 because of how difficult it can be or how uh, nonsensical the story is. But I personally like it. Like it's one of my favorite games for the year. Clearly those people haven't played DMC 1 through 3 because those games are pretty nonsensical and rather difficult. Like, I still can't beat DMC 1, and even though I beat DMC 3, it was not an easy time. And that was on, like, the normal setting. But These games are meant to be, like, fabulous, difficult hack-and-slash games. Yeah, like, the style matters and whatnot and stuff. I mean, there's a lot of things going in between but probably people did play dmc devil may cry but it's just not the one we're thinking of maybe they played the game from ninja theory <laughs> oh the the knockoff yeah <laughs> and okay I, I have to defend it because in theory dmc devil may cry is not a bad game in terms of gameplay the newer one from the what you call this uh re remaster edition something like that so that one in terms of that, makes the game much more bearable and playable. But if you play the original version, it's kind of color-coded, where red enemies get damaged by red weapons, and blue enemies get damaged by blue weapons, and so on. 
So those kind of things kind of dumb down the system a bit. But once they remaster it, they remove all those things and just put in the sense of, or just put in all weapons do damage. That's all. Yeah, I heard that the gameplay for it was actually really good. It's just that the story and the setting was just really bad. Yeah. And, you know, that's kind of what I expect these days. Like, a lot of people disregard story for video games. So I'm like, you can't do that. That's that's the reason they were made to begin with yeah, true for that. a lot of games. True that. I like... like they were interactive stories. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite, uh, quote-unquote, shooter stories was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 4. No, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare the first one that was a lot of fun I played through I think part of that game which was okay I I remember mostly playing uh, the second Call of Duty which I think is Big Red One hmm. which was on the PS2 I absolutely loved that game and the uh, the early Medal of Honor games on the PS1 I loved those those were fantastic true 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 Oh, well. I think I still think the, aside from Borderlands, I think the best story-driven shooter has been the Halo series, which we are getting on PC. True, true. I mean, oh wow, we should probably do a gaming podcast. But hey, this could be the beta <laughs> testing thing because we got no pony news. <laughs> oh yeah, the NBA show, and then the it's 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 spin off the gaming thing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the the the. The gate, the gaming, the GBS show. Hey. That's it. <laughs> oh, the, the the gaming brony. Yeah, something, something, something. Podcast. <laughs> uh, but hey, uh, if if I had time and people do enjoy us blabber about video games, probably we'll do more. Who knows? Leave a comment below if you like the idea of a gaming podcast with Norman. Yeah, or or try maybe the both of us. We could do something. We play video games. Yeah. <laughs> and we play plenty of games together. Well, we play that one game together, which I actually I've uninstalled it because it takes like, like eighty something gigs. Are you talking I'm about like, you know, I could Yeah, payday two. I'm like, I could use that space for anime. <laughs> so I'm like, I haven't touched that oh, forever. I'm gonna uninstall that. Same here, man. Like, oh man, ever since Overwatch came out, I haven't touched payday at all. Uh, I haven't even touched <laughs> Overwatch. Like, I was gonna try and play as Ash and be like, see how Ash does and all that. And I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered and uninstalled it. Oh, Same man. with Heroes of the Storm. They released, they finally released an original character to Heroes of the Storm. And I'm like, eh, <laughs> seems okay, but I can't be bothered. I think the only thing I've got Battle.net installed for is Destiny 2. And I haven't even touched that either. <laughs> Soon it'll be uninstalled. Uh, maybe if I can get myself the uh, the Forsaken expansion, I'll keep it installed. Yeah, but I I really want to play Overwatch with you just to see how uh, things are because I've played it quote unquote religiously, and it's a lot of fun. And just knowing the ins and outs for the game is just fun. Yeah, I'm. I played it a lot in the the beta period yeah. coming up the, the the open three betas. I I dominated in that. I was uh like the Mayday memes, <laughs> the uh the the Devil May. Yeah. Like I was I was that meme in the beta. <laughs> I was just terrible to fight against when I had May, but these days I'm not as good as I was. Although I'm still okay. I don't use May as often. I'm still a pain with her, but I think I do much better usually with Reinhardt. Oh, really? No. Yeah, and there was one random moment where I was uh, when they had narrowed the uh, the spread on Reaper shotguns, mm -hmm. so I was like a mid range Reaper sne uh, sneaking around and like semi sniping people out. Reaper's still good, by the way. Like they decrease his life steal to forty percent instead of fifty because fifty was kind of <coughs> unfair. And Reaper's still unfair, like... <coughs> I remember when Reaper, his thing was, if he killed you, you <coughs> dropped your soul or oh, whatever, yeah. and you that would was like dumb. those to get health back. No, that was dumb. That was, that it, was dumb. it was dumb. It, it, it barely healed anything. Yeah, like, now he's a vampire, every shot gets him life. Yeah, it's much, <coughs> much better. Proper life steal. True, 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 true. But hey, um, you know what? 
uh, we've been going on for long now. Let's wrap it up. So, what are you going to play, and what's exciting you for the future? Uh, for the, the immediate future, uh, probably I'll be playing Monster Hunter. I'll probably play that actually after we finish this. <laughs> uh, War Thunder and probably a bit of Apex Legends here and there. I've still got to wrap up some recording and scripting for YouTube and obviously continuing Twitch. Uh, and I've been uh, going through the Supernatural series. Oh, um, are you on season one going to the end? Yeah, I started that last year oh, or wow. maybe the year before. I, I forget exactly when I started, but I, yeah, I think I started early last year. So I'm about a third of the way through season eight because I've had some big gaps where I wasn't watching it. Oh, okay. What is... And they've recently... They recently announced that uh, I think season 14 is airing now, and then season 15 is the fa- final season, like the complete final season. Oh, yeah. And fun fact, uh, some of the pony people are in Supernatural. Oh, yeah. Uh, Michelle Creeb is in it, and my friend recognized her and mentioned it to her, I think, at Alicon. <laughs> and she was like, oh, yeah, I was in that show. And I was like, oh, that's pretty <laughs> Yeah. Pretty cool. She remembers she was in a show. I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's normal <laughs> to remember you're in a show. Uh, I, I I do remember like one of the episodes that I'm I have just one thing to watch is Scooby Natural. <gasps> Actually, my friend, she was so so super excited about the episode. She finally got me to watch it the other night. Because I mean, I was like, no, I don't. Want, I'll wait until season thirteen until I'm ra- at that point, and then. The other night, I'm just like, okay, okay, I'll I, sit down and I'll finally watch it. Because I love Scooby-Doo. I've got, like, mm-hmm. a good dozen Scooby-Doo DVDs here at the moment. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, I, it was a great episode. I loved it. Yeah, Velma I, is the best. I just want to... I have it in stock. Like, I just need to watch it. And up front, you got Peter New. <laughs> voice of Big Mac there. Like, okay, <laughs> you're there. You should, you should definitely watch it. Oh. It was a great episode. Oh, man, I should try, I should try. Like, uh, the Supernatural folks, they're, like, they, they're mostly logical, and then when they talk to the people, like, oh, how did that guy die? Oh, cancer. <laughs> it's like, we, we don't want to talk about it. It's, like, very dark, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. This... It's it is a bizarre mashup and it's fantastic. Oh, it's even bizarre than having WWE with Scooby Doo. Oh, uh, <laughs> Scooby's great. <laughs> Did you know Scooby is technically like cousins to Cthulhu or something like that? What? That's like canon, or and he's he's like related to Cthulhu or something. <laughs> uh, I forget exactly when that was made canon but i know that was a thing it's it's why he can talk <laughs> also the shaggy memes that have been around lately oh, yeah. the, the 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 great power of shaggy <laughs> which is awesome <laughs> oh wow okay no I'm just, uh, you just caught me off guard with scooby being related to cthulhu yeah <laughs> Oh yeah, most people don't know it. it. It's like, even I found it out, like, I think in 2017, and I was like, you got to be kidding, right? And it's like, no, it's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's a completely official thing. Is this something to, okay, is, is that realization or fact in the newer Scooby-Doo series or old? Um, I think it might be from one of the newer versions of Scooby-Doo. I'm, I'm not sure about the older versions. Okay, okay. Still, or oh, HP Lovecraft. Ah, if he were alive, what would he say about this? Like, K- canon. <laughs> he he would probably be like, "It's a talking dog. Burn it." Because HP <laughs> Lovecraft was notoriously afraid of everything except for his hometown. Oh wow! Like, and even then, yeah. Oh. All of it. All of his stories are literally, "I'm afraid of something. Let's make a story about that." <laughs> okay, right, right, right. So, um. Getting back on track, we love tangents here on the MBS show. <laughs> tangents are fun. Yep. Tangents are magic. Yep. <laughs> but anyway, um, as for me, like I mentioned before, 
uh, Overwatch, Street Fighter Five, Devil May Cry Five. Though those are going to be my staple of games that I'm going to play. Uh, other than that, I, I don't think I'll do anything new in terms of gaming. I I don't have any. Oh, um, talking about gaming, like I I think I might here here so a strong might. Uh, I might pick up the Transformer TCG. Oh yes, I've seen uh, things about that. I if that comes out down here, I'm getting my hands on that just just because Transformers. Yeah, I, even if I never play it, I'm getting those cards because I love Transformers. What I what a friend of mine who owns the shop recommends me doing was, do not buy the Optimus Prime Bumblebee starter kit or the intro pack. No, no, do not buy that one. That one's just crap. Like those are not even worth buying. What you should get is the Metroplex. Uh, start the kit, and from what he say that s- Metroplex, you can only get it in that set, and all of the cards in the booster or the deck is exclusive for Metroplex that you cannot get in the boosters. So that's something to consider. I was gonna get a Metroplex anyway. Uh, I actually have a Metroplex toy, like the old <laughs> toy. Nice. I have that still uh, sitting in a box in the shed. Yeah. Oh wow. Like, it's missing parts because I picked it up secondhand from uh, like a market stall. But I have Metroplex. Yeah, it's, it's great. Oh, by the way, um, from what I also heard, uh, the Devastator is going to come out two weeks from now, or maybe next. Week. Yeah, something like that. So that's. All right, I'll have to hear that of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's what I heard. That, that's what I heard. Like people are enjoying it, and they say that the gameplay is much faster than. Uh, any other card games, so it's really interesting. Like, uh, like I said, I I am interested, but I might not pick it up because Magic the Gathering, video games, ponies. So I'm at a spot where I have to conserve cash. If not, I'll go bankrupt. Yeah, I'm I'm sort of in that space. You know, being unemployed and I don't have the following to monetize Twitch or YouTube really yet. So. Mm-hmm gotta be very selective about what i do which is why i still haven't picked up certain dlcs for games like the forsaken for D- uh, destiny 2 yeah. i probably won't pick that up for ages because it's just i can't make that uh i don't play it enough to make that sort of decision for the money yeah i might get the the upcoming <clears throat> dlc for monster hunter world though which one the ice region yeah the iceborne yeah that that's something like that that gives you a new world to explore, new monsters. So at least that's kind of worth the cash. And I can play that game solo and enjoy it, and still have access to everything, even if I get destroyed. <laughs> Whereas you can't do everything in Destiny Two solo because some of it is you have to have party members, otherwise it's literally impossible. Yeah, and getting a group of people that you can trust doing this like that's not gonna be easy. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, so that's that's me, and you know what? Let's head into the outro because well, we've been talking for a while now, and let's wrap it up. So, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at theabusergmail dot com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And why? Where can the good people find you? Uh, they can find me at, on Twitter at the Midnight Pints. Uh, you can also find me on YouTube at the Midnight Pints, and on Twitch at Twilight Genesis. All right, then. All right, then. And also, please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and Stitch Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive dot com. Links are in the show notes. Also, do catch us on. The review and discussion podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill, <clears throat> Sapphire Heart Song, and also Totera reviewing the Pony episodes, comics, and movies. Sometimes we like to do other things and movies, like America City Bug. That's a fun one because Silver don't really like it that much, but still, it, it it's just fun and insane. Hearing reactions about that, so much fun. Kung Pao. <laughs> Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yep. It was the silver. It was the silver and twice show because Norman was incapacitated. Yep. Oh man, 
fun. That was a lot of fun. Oh. Anyway, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week of early access to the review discussion podcast. And a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I am just opening the Patreon page so I can read the names out because I forgot to do this one earlier. And they are... <coughs> uh, okay, they are... Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also Master Black. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Twilight Genesis. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Cheers.